Welcome to the Weekly Dose Podcast, your one-stop shop for the weekly news in incretin mimetic therapies with your host, Man on the Majaro, Dave Knapp. Welcome to the Weekly Dose Podcast for Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. I'm Dave Knapp, Man on the Majaro. That's why I'm here. You're on the pen. That's why you're here with Govi, Saxenda, Victoza, Trulicity, Manjaro, Zetbound. That pen, it's what we talk about here every week. It's your one-stop shop for the biggest news in GLP-1s for the week. Let's get rolling right away because, frankly, I don't have that much of a voice to work with here. So we got to get through some really big news. We're going to jump right in with Servidutide. Servidutide is a dual agonist GLP-1 polypeptide that is a collaboration between Bayringer, Ingelheim, and Zeeland Pharmaceuticals. And it's in phase three clinical trials currently for the treatment of obesity, where people have seen up to 19 plus percent loss in body weight. But the interesting thing about servidutide is we talk all, uh, all the time about terzepatide being kind of a groundbreaking medication because it's a dual agonist, a coagonist, a twin cretin, they call it. So it's not just GLP-1, it's GLP-1 plus GIP. And actually it's a five to one ratio. It's a five times stronger GIP agonist than it is a GLP-1. The next generation, of course, for Eli Lilly is ritatertide or retitrutide. And that medication is a triple agonist. So it adds GLP-1, GIP, and then glucagon. So to bring it back to servidutide, servidutide is GLP-1 and glucagon. And the glucagon receptor agonism has really proven to be a remarkable hormone as it relates to literally just melting off liver fat. And we see that in the retatrotide trials. We see some really, really amazing information coming out of those uh, clinical trials as it relates to reversing uh, NASH and reversing fatty liver in just a very quick amount of time in almost everybody who takes the medication, which is just fascinating. And with servidutide, we're seeing some awesome and really promising results as well. So some top line data was released today about servidutide. So this was a phase two trial, and this was uh, studying metabolic dysfunction associated stadiohepatitis, which is MASH. And people showed significant improvements in 48 weeks on the medication. So 83% compared to 18.2% on placebo saw biopsy proven improvement without fibrosis working on servidutide. The secondary endpoints in this trial were equally as fascinating because you actually saw a reduction in liver fibrosis, which is advanced uh, liver disease, as well as the lowering of liver fat content. Uh, complete results we're going to get down the line at a medical conference, but this is really, really interesting news uh, for the space to hear that servidutide is, is going to be a real contender and a real challenger to uh, the current treatments on the market, terzepatide and semaglutide. Now, as for the timeline of this, you're going to see servidutide drop right around the same time you see ritatatride drop from Eli Lilly. So it'll be interesting to see those play out. Ritatatride seems to be a superior molecule when it comes to um, not only uh, liver uh, results, but also with weight loss. But um these phase three trials are going to be interesting to watch for servidutide because you may see servidutide actually prior to ritatrotide getting a designation for the treatment in MASH. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Phase three trials, which require a lot of people, are really, really expensive to do when it become when it comes to liver disease because you talk about having to actually biopsy livers in thousands of patients. And so that's very expensive, very costly, uh, very time consuming. Uh, just requires a lot of resources. So we'll see if this advances to the phase three trials. They do have FDA uh, fast track authorization for that designation. So Bayringer Ingelheim's uh, servidutide may be the first one that we see actually hit the market for MASH specifically. Very, very, very interesting news uh, on servidutide this week. 
So some more interesting information in the news of medications launching in new markets when they can't meet their, their current market demands. We saw this past week that Wigovi launched in Japan. So they actually received uh, authorization to to sell the medication in Japan uh, months ago. Uh, but we saw just this past Thursday, sales began of Wigovi in Japan. So that will be interesting to see how that plays out as well. Again, you've got the same injector pens, the same molecule, uh, and they can't serve the current markets that they're in. Uh, you know, they've launched over in Europe in a couple of markets as well, uh, but still in major shortage in the United States. So interesting to see that one launch in another market. I'm not surprised by anything at this point, uh, but we'll see how that goes. And congratulations to our friends over in Japan who need access to a GLP-1 who now have access to semaglutide in the form of Wigovi. Moving right along, the biggest news of the week has to be the issues that were going on with Change Healthcare. So I want to give you a little bit of a background about Change Healthcare and kind of what's going on. So Change Healthcare is a healthcare technology company that offers a wide range of software analytics and network solutions and technology uh, services designed to optimize healthcare transactions to improve patient engagement, enhance clinical decision making, and to ultimately reduce costs. That's like their sales pitch, right? Um, they basically, you know, for all for the patient purposes, they they are a big data house for patient records. Uh, you can see on the graph on the screen if you are a YouTube member. You're seeing the video of this. Obviously, you can't see this on the podcast, but one in four U.S. patients are touched by Change Healthcare. Uh, they ha they manage over 39,000 pharmacies from the payment, and uh, they have 2,400 payer connections. Um, and they are a subsidiary of OptumRx, which is a subsidiary of ultimately United Healthcare. So essentially, what happened last week was you saw. Change Healthcare had a major uh, security breach, uh, a, a hack, if you will, and their data has been, uh, for everything that we've heard, uh, sort of held hostage at ransom. Uh, and so hopefully they're getting that all figured out at this point. Huge impacts, right? But but the main impact for purposes of this, this platform and this channel is that many, many people, because... Uh, Change Healthcare operates at 39,000 pharmacies and they've all been down since last Thursday. You see the people aren't able to run their benefits on their medications. Uh, so they're not getting their insurance co-pays. They're not getting the manufacturer savings cards run. And ultimately, at the, at the end of the day, what you see is, is people just haven't been able to get access to their medications. So there are a couple of things that you want to make sure that you are doing in the meantime. You want to have, first of all, really good uh, personal data hygiene on the internet. You want to change passwords. Uh, anywhere that you're using duplicate passwords, you want to go in there, log in, find a different password. You want to be aware as uh, potential text messages or emails come in that have sensitive personal information and look like they're from a legit source, know that illegitimate sources now have some of that sensitive information and can very easily make something look like it's from a legitimate outfit. It's got some of your personal information that they would obviously have access to, uh, but it's you know going to be malicious. So you want to be very, very uh, mindful of that. You want to probably make sure that you have all of your credit monitoring stuff going so that you can make sure that your data is as protected as can possibly be in a massive breach like this. Many, many Americans are mo a good good number, I should say, of Americans are going to be impacted by this. So the big question that I keep getting is, Dave, when when is this going to be resolved? Where are they going to be back online? And the answer that I have for you is uh, we've heard from clinicians, we've heard from pharmacies that have heard in conference calls from Change Healthcare that they had expected by today, when this podcast drops Tuesday, that they're uh, that they'll be back up and running and able to process scripts. Now, what we've been hearing today on Monday, as I'm recording this, does not leave me very hopeful that that will actually be the case. What we're hearing is uh, language coming from Change Healthcare, like 
Uh, we're still investigating certain things. We're protecting data. If we find other areas of intrusion, we'll be shutting other things down. So they sound like they're still in the discovery mode of finding out how deep this hack goes, what all has been impacted by this hack. And that to me does not sound like a company that's going to be ready to fire things up tomorrow and run things. So some insurance companies have come out to their uh, to their uh, patients and said, essentially, go ahead and pay out of pocket. We'll reimburse you. Now, I would just give you a word of warning. Um, you know, you have to do what you have to do. And hopefully if you are relying on medication that you need to fill right now, uh, that you have the means to do that for starters, but just know that the reimbursement process for these, there's going to be thousands and thousands of claims. They're not used to handling all that at once. They're not going to necessarily have the resources. So I wouldn't expect those refunds to be done expeditiously. So just know that if you're going to pay out of pocket, that it's probably going to be a good amount of time before you see that reimbursement check come back to you. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, you know, for GLP-1 medications, you may want to talk to your doctor about some alternate sources. Uh, perhaps compounding uh, would be a good way to look in the meantime. Um, obviously, we've got some sources that we can help you be linked in the description of this video. Uh, but it is going to be a bumpy ride because I would be, I think it's optimistic to think that they will be back online this week. Um, I think it's more likely that it, it could be in the coming weeks that they would be back online. But we'll have to kind of sit this one out and wait and see. This is this is a terrible, terrible situation uh, for the healthcare system. Uh, this is a terrible situation for patient data. Uh, because this, all this data is, our, our medical records are tied to this data uh, that was breached, and so now it's in the hand of uh, hands of, uh, you know, potentially bad actors. I mean, definitely bad actors, and we'll just ha have to sort of see how this one plays out. So, unfortunate news uh, in the world of GLP ones this week. Make sure that you're talking to your doctor and having a plan because this could carry on for even longer than we think right now. It just depends on how deep, how far reaching this is and how quickly they're able to bring their systems back online in a safe manner. And given the sensitivity of the data, there's a lot of exposure for the company right now and a lot of risk involved in bringing everything back online. So stay tuned to this. We'll keep you uh, up to date on all the latest information. Make sure that you follow the podcast. Make sure that you follow the YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe over there. I'll keep you updated on all the updates as they come. You can follow me over on TikTok as well. Make sure that you uh, give this podcast a five-star rating and review. That helps the information uh, get disseminated a, uh, a little bit uh, better through the algorithm over on Apple. I hope that by midweek for On The Pen Live, I've got a voice back, uh, but I appreciate you bearing with me uh, through my through my. Uh, struggles this week as I try to get healthy again here from being down with a little virus. So thank you for being with me. Thank you for being the best part of what we do at On The Pen, The Weekly Dose. Thanks for watching and listening to this podcast. Make sure you give it a great review and we will catch you next week.